Oh, yeah. 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 Wait, wait. Yeah, it's working. I can see you guys. Oh, wait, really? Yeah. There's a delay. There is, there is a delay. There's like, it's like about a five second, I think 10 second delay. Real quick. All right, hey, Mike. Yes, sir. Hey, I think we're, so far it's showing up on people people's browsers, so. Oh, wow. So, so basically, if, if you're ready, if you're ready to start, you, you ready to start? Sure, let's go for it. All right. Yay, it worked. All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the NJMEA conference info session. Woo! For those of you who don't know me, my name is Andrew Cox, and I'm the president of NJMEA Collegiate. So. For all of you that's out there who are watching, welcome. I hope you're able to see this fine. I think there might be a little delay, but oh well. Life will go on. Life will go on. And Mike, do you want to introduce you yourself? Sure. Good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Sayas, and welcome to the 2013 NGMEA State Conference. And I am the Collegiate Coordinator for Volunteer Activities with NGMEA. Pleasure, and welcome to all of you guys. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, yes. All right. So if you just give me one more minute for all those out there watching, there's one more thing I have to do real quick. Sure. You guys can talk, talk. All right, we're going to screen share, everyone. Get ready. We're going to screen share. <laughs> All right, Mike, hold on just one more minute, Mike. Sure. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so then what you're just gonna do basically is just I'm gonna play the it's, it's gonna it's gonna look different. Yeah, yeah. You actually you're just gonna do this just just like that because if you do full screen it doesn't work. Okay. All right. Mike, you still there? I'm here. Can All right, me? let's do this. Welcome, everyone, to the NJMEA conference info session, better known as Playing Your Cards Right, the ins and outs of the NJMEA conference 2013. <laughs> so, right, there we go. So, we're now in the briefing stage. There's a golden rule that we all must know before going into this sacred NJMEA conference. You are representing your school and NJMEA at this conference, not only as a volunteer, but as a conference attendee as well. So good behavior, good behavior. You also want to dress nice, as if you're going to an interview. An example of how to dress nice would be my good friend Ralphie. Uh, see, Ralphie, he's got a nice tie. He's got a nice shirt, a belt, and some slacks. And you know what? He dressed himself. <laughs> That's pretty smart for a kid that young. And behave well, you know, no rude comments, no inappropriate mannerisms, no drinking, no drugs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, fine print, fine Andrew print. question. Yes. The rules of the source apply to this campus? Yes, this is, um, for all those out there at NGM, NGM and Collegiate, here at Ryder we have a handbook called The Source, and basically you follow the rules here at this conference too. Okay. So, and one thing, 
that I love. Get out there and socialize. It's the fun part about this conference. You get to go out and meet new people, your peers from around the other colleges that you'll never see, you know, except once a year maybe. So go out there, have fun. So, wait, hold on. Oh, where's volume? Volume, volume. <clears throat> That's good enough. Oh, we got the tower in there. It's a very good place to start. <laughs> Phase one, location. So, general location facts. It's called the Hilton Hotel and Executive Meeting Center. The address is 3 Tower Center Boulevard, East Brunswick, New Jersey. The telephone is 732-828-2000. Mike, anything to add there? Uh, looks good. I like the picture of the uh, <clears throat> the lobby there. It looks nice. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. And uh, lobby, yeah, I guess. And uh, as far as that goes, um, are we going to talk about checking in and all that kind of stuff as well? Yes. You actually, since we're that's where the area where we're checking in. Do you want to explain the checking in process? Yeah, let me do that. All right, guys. So basically, with the check in process, when you arrive at the hotel. Um, just a little general rule of thumb, if you can send me an email, or not an email, uh, send me a text message just to let me know that you're on your way. Like if I'm in the, the tower or if I'm somewhere else and you need me very badly at the front desk and they're uh, being um, very busy for some reason, uh, give me a text and I'll, I'll uh, try to get over to the desk and help you out. But basically, uh, everybody's going to be divided into the rooms. Uh, Andrew had made up a room list. Nice job with that, Andrew, by the way. And um, the front desk will have that on hand and on file, so they will uh, be able to look your name up and see where you're going, and they will send you off to that. As far as incidentals and things of that nature, um, they may ask for a credit card on file for whatever reason, whoever's the first one there. Um, if you guys feel strongly against leaving a credit card, which obviously you will not be charged for anything, um, I can have them shut off all the incidentals to the rooms if that's okay with you guys. This way you won't have to deal with that. Uh, how do you guys feel about that? Any comments, thoughts? Any criticism? comments on that? No, you, I, think, okay. I think we're all good there. All right, so I'll have the uh, hotel shut the incidentals off. This way you don't have to leave a credit card on file. Because in the past years, people have gotten confused and might be charged or this and that. And the only way that your credit card would be charged is if your room decides to get room service or uh, there's some damage to the rooms or <clears throat> some unexpected furniture ends up in your room from the hallway for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's happened. it's happened. It has happened. That's the best part. Um, but, um, yeah, that's the only thing. If you guys order room, I think I just said that. Uh, if you charge things to your room from the restaurant, things of that nature, make sure you guys agree. If you uh, if we can't shut it off and it has to stay on, then um, make sure you guys agree with, uh, before you guys do that. And, obviously, the credit card on file will be charged at the end of the, uh, the um, convention weekend unless uh, you guys go down to the desk and tell them that you want to split it four ways or whatever you do. That is the credit card deal. All right, sounds good, Mike. Sounds good. Just give me a... <clears throat> okay, so the next bar in the hotel, there are two nice restaurants. One's a sports bar, and the others is more. It's a it's a Carlisle's. What's the other restaurant, Mike? Uh, the other restaurant, I'm not sure what that's called. I think it's just called restaurant. Um, <laughs> 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 However, the food has gotten a lot better in both locations, so I do recommend uh, the restaurant's a little bit more expensive than the sports bar, but nonetheless, both places have really good food. Right, the sports bar is pretty cheap too. Like I got a nice buffalo chicken wrap there, in and filled me up for the night. Tasty, tasty. Do you recommend that? I do recommend it. I do. There's I also do too. <laughs> there is wireless internet, but that's kind of only available in the lobby area, Mike? Do you remember that? Well, what we've been discussing, actually, James had mentioned, I'm not sure if he brought that up in his presentation thing. I was actually looking forward to reading. Um, there probably will be wireless internet throughout the grounds of the hotel, such as the Hilton area. I'm not sure about the tower, but uh, the Hilton should have wireless internet or Wi-Fi access throughout the entire grounds. Okay, good. That good. would be cool. Obviously, in your rooms, if you want that, I think there's a charge for that. I'm not sure how they're going to do that. But uh, that's why probably I might leave the incidentals on just for that reason, so you guys will be able to do that. Right, okay. So they would tell us when we checked in about the wireless, correct? Yeah, if you bring that up to them, ask them about that. Um, as far as the grounds of the hotel goes, James, that's, out, that's actually the AV audio-visual company that we're using. I think they're setting that up. I'm not sure what they're doing with that yet. Okay, cool. So some other features about the hotel. There is a... Oh, if I actually clicked... 
there is a fitness room and a pool. Very snazzy. Mike, you were just telling me that they're both open from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m.? That is correct. I believe it's 10 o'clock. I know it opens at 6, so if you guys are really adamant like I am going to the gym, I work out every day, and uh, if I don't work out every day, I feel like I kind of wasted the whole day, so that's me. Uh, you'll probably see me down there, hopefully. Um, yeah, it's a nice gym. They have two sides. You go into the pool area, and uh, you go. One side has um, treadmills, all that good stuff, and stair masters, and all that. The other side, the free weights, and all that kind of thing. There's a jacuzzi in there. There's a hot tub, saunas, all that good stuff. Right. So if you actually have time for it, I suggest going to it because it's very relaxing. <laughs> Having time. <laughs> <laughs> so there's also what's nice. There's a hotel convenience store. They actually do have a lot of you know essential like toiletries if you forgot anything. As well as sweets too. Like I got a nice bag of Reese's piece, pieces for like three dollars. I was like, bam, that got yeah, me. I mean, if you really feel like it, if you want to pretend you're at a stadium or anything like that, use that. Otherwise, there's Wawa's and all that good stuff up the road. That's true. There's a lot of things. There's also an on-site ATM machine, and once more, as Mike said, there is the room service and delivery options. Right. Room service is expensive, and they'll probably tack on a nice twenty-five dollar charge. Excuse me. Let me try that again. Twenty-five percent surcharge. So, um, if you like a room service and you really want it badly, knock yourself out. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> so, what's nice? This is. There's also a lot of like food areas around the hotel. This is like all within a one to five in a range. There's a Famous Dave's. There's an You're all Famous Dave's? I didn't yeah. know that. Wow. Okay, yeah. I looked up on MapQuest. MapQuest said it's Famous Dave's. I, I hope they lie to me. But there is a White also... Castle, too. Wait, what'd you say, Mike? There's also a White Castle. You might have to ask James about that. Uh, Dallas Brass was very adamant about getting White Castle at 3 o'clock in the morning, and they found White Castle. So there's somewhere, somewhere around there. Right. There's also an On the Border. I think actually people from Westminster went there on the Thursday night. Is I think I'm trying to remember who. Was it Chili's? Was it Chili's? So there's also a Chili's. And Five Guys. And Five Guys. There are a lot of things around the area. There's also a Hula Hands apparently. There's a Dunkin' Donuts about two minutes down from the hotel. So if you're going to need your caffeine and coffee, Dunkin' Donuts. And Starbucks too. There's also, and actually, there's also coffee at the registration table each day, right, Mike? Uh, that I don't know. That's not up to me. That's up to uh, Debbie Sfraga. Gotcha. I know there was some last year, so I'm hoping definitely there's some more coffee at the registration table. We'll see what we can do with that one. Also, you forgot to mention, in the tower, there's the guard. I think I forgot what the name of that thing is called. There's a little cafeteria in there, but uh, nonetheless, they sell Starbucks right. coffee in there. Um, nice dishes, lunch, uh, sandwiches, everything in there, too. Yeah, and that, and that little place in the tower, they're also pretty cheap, too, I think. They are know? cheap, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can, get, you can get a lot there. It's, there's a lot of options, too. And if you need to fulfill that fast food need, there's also Burger King right down the road. And if you're feeling like ordering out, feeling fancy, I had China King my first year at the conference when I was a wee freshman, and it was delicious. It was a good choice. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I love Chinese food. So here we go, the layout of the hotel. So the lobby is right below this. And then you're going to go up some wonderful escalators, and then you're going to have these wonderful rooms, such as the sports bar right here, and the boardroom one where most of the volunteers are going to meet. We're going to have meetings and everything. Well, actually, as far as boardroom one goes, I don't know if we're going to be able to use the boardroom this year. We might have to use the fifth floor for uh, meetings and stuff, but the boardroom oh, okay. is basically going to be for um, bag stuffing. But at least at the fifth floor, there's an elevator, so it's not like a ton of walking. Right, right, right. Good. Because you'll be doing enough walking that day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Trent and Juan Grove room, there are two separate rooms, but they can be one. There's a little divider. I know the um, Dr. Quist master class, the Coral Conducting master class, is going to be in this Oh, Trent and Monroe? Yeah. Mm hmm And then, what's next? If you go up the next set of escalators, you get to the ballroom level of the Hilton Hotel. The ballroom. Mm hmm Fancy. Salon D. These salons right here are going to have your exhibitors. These salons right here are going to be your big concerts, I guess the King Singers concert and the Intercollegiate concert, as well as the Collegiate Luncheon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we also have the Brunswick ABC rooms. I believe Dr. Abrahams, you know, from Westminster, is doing his session. It's going to be all three rooms because once more divider, so we have one big room because he's just that amazing, I guess. <laughs> so also, these rooms right here are also used for sessions. And then the oh, magic. Well, Andrew, if I may, real quick, can yeah. you go back to that slide? Yeah. Oh, awesome. 
This is so cool. All right, so on the ballroom, if I may just get, also give out like a description of, um, should I talk about equipment stuff yet, or do you want to do that later? Um, we can do that later when we get to James' video. Very good. Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So then here's the magical fifth floor. There are, there are a few sessions, but not a lot on this floor, right, Mike? That's correct. And yeah. I believe there's only one day that we're actually using the fifth floor. I think it's Thursday. I believe sure. so, yes. Right, because that's the, like, all the like, Technology Academy, the Marching Band Academy, the Wind Band Academy, all the other ones. Right. So, if you remember that wonderful image of the concourse in your head, you went up that escalator, you would follow the hall to go to the tower, and then, and you'll notice the tower, it's huge, big lobby, and then you'll take an elevator up to the 19th floor. You have these wonderful rooms. Volunteers last year, you'll have realized all the rooms have been changed to match the oh, composers. Yes, they have. Let's wear music so and everything. That's so funny. <laughs> Mike, who, Mike, who came? Who renamed the rooms? That that was Marie. Uh, she decided to name one of the floors a classical floor, a baroque floor, and a romantic floor. Ooh. So it's, you know it's creative. I mean, a music convention, so why not? <laughs> So you have next... a Vivaldi room, I see. I have a J.S. Bach room. I didn't even know all the names that we have in there, but that's uh, pretty Oh, yeah, cool. there's a lot of names. There's Sal a good oh, mm -hmm. I think I'm Salieri. On the... Yep, Sal we have the Sali oh, Salieri's right next to Mozart. Oh, he'd, he'd be creeping up on Mozart. Mm -hmm. So this is the whole thing that we're talking about. Mike, do you want to give any info on these rooms, or can we go on? You can go on. I don't know too much about them. You'll probably get more about that in James's uh, session. Right. And then, of course, we have the last area we'll be using is the wonderful 21st floor. And the view from that is <clears throat> stunning. If you look down, it's, it's beautiful. And then, oh, as yeah. you can see, romantic-esque composers. So. Oh, this is more exciting than the time I got to ride the washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> the sessions. It's oh, definitely something. That's funny. I had well, I had to use that because short story, one of the presenters that's usually at this conference, his name is Peter Griffin. Oh yeah. Oh god. Uh, I had to use Peter Griffin. I see what I did there. I tried to weave in the the culture of America and everything to so make it more meaningful to us. So, not to be biased, but the best part of this conference is definitely the Collegiate Academy on Saturday, February twenty third. Not 25th, 23rd. <laughs> the computer must have typed it, but I definitely didn't type the 25th. I guess it was the computer's fault. So, yeah, technology sometimes. So, this one right here, Survivors, the first year, it's basically all about what happens when you actually get out there after you graduate and how to deal with that, you know, same with the transition to the teaching world, keeping your sanity intact. That's always a good thing, to keep your sanity intact. And that is by... Um, Rachel Claude and Eric McLaughlin from oh, wow. the Beach. Do you know any of those, Mike? I do. Rachel Claude used to be on the uh, the State Collegiate Board, and Rachel Claude also uh, was a volunteer for many years, so she's a great asset. Oh, good. Good, good, good. And then another... Actually, I believe she went to Rowan, if I'm not mistaken. I think. Don't quote me on that. I won't, then. Okay, so, very good. <laughs> another session you might want to check out is what happens when I add kids, a proactive approach to classroom management for the new teacher. It's basically all about classroom management strategies, such as minimizing classroom interruptions and maximizing classroom learning and nurturing and fostering a creative climate in your music classroom. And do you remember who's the presenter for that one, Mike, or no? No, not off the top of my head. Oh, well, there's a conference booklet, which you all should have the link to. If not, I'll gladly give you the link to it. And then, of course, we have the Choral Conducting Masterclass, a first for the Collegiate Academy this year, taught by Westminster's own Amanda Quist. We have four people from Westminster going and one from Rowan. So it's going to be really exciting. We're doing some Brahms and Haydn, so definitely try to go to that one if you can. Another one you might want to check out is Nail Down That Job, Successful Strategies for Interview Success. Interviews are, interviews are going to play a really important part you know, in getting the job for a teacher. So you want to make sure you definitely check that out. There's going to be techniques, strategies for us as you know, overview of what kind of questions they'll ask. And it's taught by Peter Griffin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 and then, oh, uh, 
Oh, okay, there we go. And then another one you might want to check out is what are we, what, what we are, we, what are, what we are, we are, we are, what do we play? It's been a long day. Developing a programming philosophy, and that is going to be Emily Therian from, Temp from Temple University. So that's definitely nice to have someone outside of New Jersey coming in. And she's going to basically talk about creative, educational, and practical strategies to help teachers design programs that reflect their musical values and provide band students a balanced diet of styles, techniques, and genre. So what's nice for, you know, us at Westminster, it's, you know, we, we get, you know, instrumental in classes, but it's nice also to experience more instrumental. And then another one you might want to check out is planning the perfect mu music lesson with wonderful Dr. Frank Abrahams. So if you don't go to that, I'll probably guilt trip you. So just saying. So on to so this is the first day. I got the date right this time. Ah, there you go. So oh, oh but I didn't get the date right there. Oh, I jinxed myself. I'm telling you, this com this computer's after me. So yeah. So on Thursday, February twenty first. So a lot of academies happening at once. There's the Marching Academy, the Wind Band Academy, the Jazz Band Academy, the Elementary Academy, and the Choral Academy. So there's a lot of different sessions happening at once with these different kinds of focus topics, such as what college didn't tell me about marching band? The, his name's Ralph, right? The presenter of that? Yes. Ralph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he's been there for a while, I believe. Like he's there. I know he was there when I first started volunteering. That's like a Oh, big, he's a he's a regular. Yeah, because I believe he works with he works with Disney in some capacity, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And I believe he's somehow involved with the youth education and the arts as well. The uh, the uh, cadets at Bergen County, the drum corps people. Right, right. So basically, he'll tell you like different like comp like um, comp competition techniques, what some adjudicators look for in marching band and so forth. Another one you want to check out is Order from Chaos, Teaming the Wild Classroom, and that's made John Jacobson from the Hal Leonard Corp Corporation. Great and session. What would you say, Mike? John Jacobson's a great presenter. Has he been to NJMEA before? I believe so, yes. Mm -hmm. I've seen him on uh, the national level, too, actually. He's really good. Oh, good. And he's basically going to like, show you all kinds of new music, games, dances, and classroom techniques for your, class, for your classroom. Another one you want to check out is iPads in the Classroom. And that's going to be taught by our collegiate advisor, Dr. Rick Zammers. And he, he's a technology master. I don't know how he does it, but he's just wonderful with technology. Oh, yes. Another one you want to check out is movement in the choral rehearsal for expressive and engaging singing. And actually, it is with, from East Brunswick High School, Jennifer Sengin. Sengin, yes. I, actually, for anyone in LNG practice in my group, I don't think they're here. We're actually going to a school, so that's exciting. So she's going to talk once more about how, mo how movement provides singers the opportunities to physically experience music. So, and then there's Friday. Friday for volunteers is going to be a very interesting day because that's when the conference really starts and you'll be moving around a lot. What do you have to say about that Friday, Mike? Have fun. It's going to be hectic at times. It'll be um, <clears throat> there'll be some up times. There'll be a lot of downtime too, folks. I mean, you would not think that in a convention with this capacity that we would actually have downtime, but there will be. That's the that's the beauty of production. That's what I'm not really calling you guys uh, volunteers. I'm calling you guys production assistants because that's what you're doing. You're doing production. And you guys are going to walk away with a very valuable lesson because when you go into the schools, you might be uh, put into a position where you're going to have to do production needs. So this is actually a really good thing for you. Friday is going to be very busy. Uh, there will be uh, numerous text messages going through your phones from uh, Andrew. <laughs> and uh, there will be all call pages. We might have to uh, strike a room and reset it in a matter of 15 minutes and set it up for a wind ensemble from a quarter core reading session. That could happen at any time. Last year on Friday, we had a situation where at the very last minute, um, a college professor decided to change his location. He was supposed to be in Salon AB, where a lot of the large uh, capacity ensembles go. He decided to go into the tower. And uh, we had to bring every single piece of percussion equipment from the Hilton to uh, the tower in the span of uh, 25 minutes, with uh, elevators getting stuck. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, the, the, fright, the fright elevator. Oh, that's a fun. That's that fun elevator. Fright elevator. So that, that could be a thing. However, we got it done. We, everybody was on call, and everybody pitched in, and we got it done. And last year's staff was amazing. We did indeed. It was quite a miracle. So Friday, you realize, Friday's one of the days you see a lot of reading sessions, which means you'll get 
free music, which is the best thing. Free, free, free. An example of some of the reading sessions there is um, Razzle Dazzle, the best of Broadway in the movies. So that would probably be fun for your future kids. There's also new music for the elementary program. And Make the Discovery, new music for developing choirs with John Jacobson once more. Some other ones, sessions you want to check out is developing a successful conductor a confidence relationship. I think that's a first to NJMA this year, Mike. Have you? I so. Yeah, and that's a very unique one just because it's important for you and your confidence to work together if you are given a confidence to have it in the budget. Another one you want to definitely check out is vocal transformation for secondary school choirs with. That's my Chris Bass. Chris Bass. Nice. That was filmed my freshman year. Really? In high school. So um, it's a Hal Leonard DVD, published DVD, and she takes you on a journey of the freshman choir, what the, she gives you before and after recordings. So you hear them sing a scale in the beginning, you hear them sing it in the end, and then she also shows you on um, the journey of how to take that freshman choir and lead them up to the top curricular choir. So she shows her warm-ups, her techniques and stuff, and it's really cool too. Nice. Well, thank you for telling us about her. <laughs> Another one I want to check out is Are You Hip? As hip as a fourth grader. <laughs> it's tall pro his name is Jim Tinder. He's retired. He's from Ohio. And he talks about he'll he's gonna incorporate examples from like the sound of music to Star Wars to Iron Man to We Will Rock You and how you can enrich in the live music program with pop music that children know and love. You know, it's taking things from their world off. <laughs> Another one you want this is definitely one you definitely want to check out because it's gonna be with our NAFME president, as in our national president, Nancy Dittmer. Is that, that's how you say her last name, right, Mike? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Yes. And she's basically going to talk about how directors obtain meaningful information about individual student learning in the context of a large ensemble rehearsal. Nancy also to be speaking for those who at the collegiate luncheon on Saturday. She's going to be giving like, the keynote address, so it's going to be a good one. Another one you want to check out is using the Saban syndrome to work with non-Saban students with special education needs. This is going to be, do you remember who the presenter for this one is, Mike? Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Um, oh, wait, there's right. definitely one, guys, if uh, those of you who are not familiar with working with special needs students, I work in a special needs school, so I, I'm surrounded by that all the time. That would be definitely one, if you can get into that, go to it, because you never know what you're going to be dealing with in your classrooms. Mm -hmm, definitely. Oh, her name is Erica St. Dennis from Ithaca College, so... Another one you want to check out is fundraising for music teachers, what they never taught you in college, and that's by Phil Blackman. I think he's done a session like this before, right, Mike? Yes, he has. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's, he's, I think he's been at the conference every year, so he's definitely, mm -hmm. it's definitely a popular one because, let's face it, fundraising is something we definitely need to know about in this wonderful economic time. Another, another one you might want to check out is interdisciplinary arts education, the 21st century creative class, and that's going to be taught by Bill Grillo and Kate Okenson from Roomson Fairhaven Regional High School here in Roomson, New Jersey. Mike, do you know anything about them? Uh, no, not yet. I'm sure I'll be uh, seeing them tomorrow, actually, in the uh, dinner. Oh, are they going to be there at the dinner tomorrow night? Possibly, possibly. Oh, nice. Very nice. So it basically talks about P21 skills, stuff like that. So, so on to phase three. Special events. The big one is the King Singers the on King Friday Singers. night. And Mike, is for all volunteers and collegiate attendees, is this, is the, do they have a ticket or no, including the registration, or is it like $20 extra? That's the one uh, That's the one downside. Unfortunately, I can't get you guys tickets to that. The one thing I can do, whoever wants to jump on this, if anybody, I need about six to eight, eight ushers for that concert. And those of you that do that, uh -huh. Obviously, we'll get we'll get in for uh, watch the concert for free, so that's one nice advantage. So whoever wants to jump on that, feel free. Yeah, I think sixteen. I think sixteen <laughs> hands just went up. So <laughs> we'll definitely we'll talk about that. After yeah, we'll get meeting. that going. We'll get that going. I'll see what I can do about that. I'm not sure, but that's up to Debbie Sprague. And at the moment, she said no, but that can change. Like uh, we've had years where she said, "Yeah, let him in." Right, right. But yeah, the King Singers. Woo. And there's also been some concerts from collegiate chapters in New Jersey middle schools and high schools. Now, for us at Westminster, what's nice, we're going to have the Westminster Warblers there as well as the Vitamin D. So if you get a chance to check them out, check them out. And what's nice is these little lobby concerts are very relaxed, about 15 to 20 minutes each. And it's a great way to hear other high schools, middle schools, and what's happening, as well as college ensembles. And get also idea for repertoire in your classroom. And then, of course, the big one, the Collegiate Luncheon, which 
we're going to talk about some cool stuff. Nancy Dithmer is going to talk. We're going to do nominations, well, sorry, elections for state board, which if you're interested, I'll tell you more about that later. I would love to have people here at Westminster and those of us tuning, those tuning in to definitely sign up for nominations for state board. It's a wonderful experience. You get to work with the crazy person that's talking right now. You know, <laughs> it's not too bad. Yeah. And then we just, for those of us who are staying in the hotel, just a nice little break. Here's an idea of what the rooms are going to look like. Home sweet home. It will definitely. Oh, Andrew, you showed them the wrong picture. The, 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 they downgraded everything. It looks, uh, they uh, have uh, holes in the. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, my face just turns like, oh my god. <laughs> I'm going to get you, Mike. Get you, right, you're allowed. Now, guys, with the rooms, I mean, obviously, you can see by the pictures, I, they might have actually upgraded since then, so you might actually be getting some more comfort uh, amenities in there. I don't know what's in the rooms at the moment, yeah. but um, you'll definitely enjoy a nice, comfortable seat. I'll tell you that now. Right. So what's nice, yeah, for all volunteers and if anyone here actually does have a hotel, once you get back to that hotel room, it's going to feel great because you're going to want to take a nice nap, you're going to relax after a hard day's work because volunteering, you know, it's fun, but it's also, it can be rigorous in the sense too. And also, be careful, I mean, every hotel has this, but just going to throw it out there, the automatic door closers, make sure if you're going out of your room that you have the card with you or someone's in there that can let you back in. It's going to be a real pain sometimes if you get your card and then you're locked out. It's never fun. Yeah, that's when you have to wait for security to come up, and then you just check your ID and all that stuff. It's annoying. I think I see Andrew. Ah, oh, hey, there you are. All right, we're back. And oh, and we're back. And we're back. I guess I will hang up my phone now. All right. So let's keep moving on then. <clears throat> oh no! Oh. I couldn't find a better recording. <laughs> now onto the face door. Ah, right, there we go. You gotta know these people coming up because you know what? This is your chance to network with people. Be like, hi, I'm so and so from so and so college. You know, I hear you're so and so. Wonderful to meet you. Wonderful. You're so and so. So, some people you might want to know are the collegiate board. Now, president of his name is Andrew Cox. He's oh, kind yeah. of a he's a very interesting individual. So I you know approach him with caution. I would say the VP slot is technically vacant right now. So. 
those of us who are sophomores in here, sophomores in here, should put in a nomination for themselves for vice president, president-elect, sophomores, and sophomores watching as well on the stream too. Please put in a nomination. And how would they do that, Mr. President? Well, I'm going to tell them after this Wonderful. meeting, of course. Oh. Ooh. Our secretary is on the right, Megan or Oraski, right here. So she's our secretary. The next person is Lindsay Malco, and she is second, wait, second in right, second in the left, right? That's how I would say. I can't talk right now, apparently. Right here. And then our media coordinator is Josh Minzer, all the way on the left. He's from Keene University. Lindsay is from Rutgers, and Megan is from Rowan. What's nice about the executive board this year is that we were all from different schools. So I am looking for that again. But, you know, if someone from Westminster decides they want to run or someone from the other schools watching, I won't mind one bit at all. Some other people you might want to know. This is where we start getting into the interesting stuff right here. Thank you. So... I definitely want to know the NJ and the president, Keith Hobson. He's a very, very laid-back guy, very approachable. You would say, right, Mike, he's very approachable. Uh, Keith, yes, very much so. Right, okay. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Another person you want to know is William McDevitt. He is the past president-elect. Joseph Jacobs is the incoming, the upcoming, the president-elect, technically. This guy right here, all the way at the bottom, is our very own Michael. Hello, Michael. Everybody. Hello. Yes, is there anything else you want to tell us about yourself? Do you like, like long walks on the beach, you know, dark chocolate, anything? Um, well, actually, I do like long walks on the beach, absolutely. And uh, I like exercising. I like, um, I like being active, I'll put it that way. Good, 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 good. Indeed. So, another person right here, this is our collegiate advisor, Richard Dammers. He's from Rowan University. He's the one I was talking about earlier with iPads in the classroom that session and him doing a lot in technology. Right now, that is Marie Malera. She's basically the manager of the conference, and she's also very nice, very approachable. What, any, anything you want to say about Marie, Mike? Yeah, guys, uh, Marie, as James, I'm sorry, I'm calling you James. Sorry, Andrew. Um, <laughs> Marie is a, a really, really awesome person. Um, I've been working with her since 1997. I've been volunteering for this convention since, um, yeah, that's a long time. Uh, Marie is, um, she's a convention manager, uh, very much approachable. Anything that goes wrong about anything, if you see Marie, go ask her a question. Say, what can I do to help? And that seems to be the slogan around um, the convention last year. Rather than, how can I help you? What can I do to help you? If you see any of these people, just say hello to them. Introduce yourselves. Don't be afraid of them. They don't bite, especially myself. And uh, uh, we're all good people. We are here to help you guys. We want you to get the most meaningful experience out of this convention. And these guys will definitely help you to do that. Deborah is the only executive board. She's a secretary and treasurer. And also, for anyone who works registration as a volunteer, you're going to report to her, right, Mike? Yes, Debbie, and then on the top right-hand corner, that's Kathy Mosier. She's also going to be at registration. This right here, Kathy Mosier on the top right, and her husband, Tom, is actually, he's on the exec executive board as well. He does like all the web stuff in the Tempo magazine. Right. He all that. I skipped over a few people. Right yeah, here, Tom, actually, just real quick on Tom. Tom Mosier actually is responsible for the uh, convention book. He uh, And Marie. Tom um, is the one that uh, publishes that book. Marie, of course, uh, does all the... Uh, the crazy stuff making that book happen, but Tom, uh, he's um, he's a lot with the uh, publishing stuff. And then to the left of Kathy is our good friend James. He's the AV equipment manager. Anything you want to say about James? Yeah, guys, James is basically the uh, person that you will be uh, hearing from the most. I'm here to help James, of course, and obviously, you know, guide you guys in the right direction. But uh, James is the uh, main when it comes to uh, what we'll be doing with the productions end of this. James will be the go-to guy. Um, we'll all be walking around with headsets, myself, James, um, Andrew, I think you might, I'm not sure, you might have a headset, uh, Marie will have one, anybody with a headset, um, you know, approach us for those things, but James will be uh, sending out those ridiculous uh, text messages saying, I need 30 people to set up uh, Salon AB in 15 minutes. Oh yeah, answer the call. And yeah. then right next to Mike <laughs> is Nancy, and she's basically in charge of all the exhibitors events. Right. Nancy's on the uh, the ballroom floor. If you're going to Salon D, 
Um, if you can picture the elevator, those of you who have been there before, you get off the escalator, go around the little bend there. Salon D is off to the left. There will be a desk there. Nancy's the uh, exhibits coordinator. Um, she doesn't really need too much help, but, uh, you know, check in with her from time to time, saying what can I do to help you if you need anything, you want a break, that kind of thing. Okay. And then basically some speakers we talked about earlier. Nancy Dipmer is going to be there. Sally K. Albrecht. You've probably read a piece of hers before. She has a lot of choreography and dancing with music, She's a lot of like more popular arrangements of songs. You've probably sung something that heard before. Chris Bass, of course. Robert Frampton is also someone you might be on the, on the lookout for who's doing some speaking stuff. He was a past NJMEA president, and now he's the president-elect of the Eastern NJMEA. Is that correct, Mike? Yes, it is. Okay, good. And then, of course, there's John Jacobson we talked about earlier from the Hal Leonard Corporation. Those, those of us at Westminster, we know Melissa Malvar from the Princeton Girl Choir, of course, so she's going to be there and we can look out for her. And another one that's well-known name you definitely want to try to go to a session of hers is Amanda Clarefield Newell. She's basically, she's wonderful with classroom management and Ooh, yes, she is. elementary music. The thing she said, she actually did, a, for Westminster people, she did a conference, you know, a session here, Saturday seminar, my freshman year, so anyone here is a junior might remember her, but very good stuff she does. So, a quick thing. The exhibitors, events, all the stuff we talk about that Nancy's in charge of, there's going to be tons of booths that can once more give out free stuff. Free stuff, that's the key word. So, good. you might want to check out the Yamaha booth. There's an ACDA New Jersey booth. There's a Hal Leonard booth. They definitely give out stuff. There's an Alfred Music booth. They give out a lot of stuff, too. And it's Sally Albrecht will also be the uh, pretty much uh, the rep that's running that booth, too. And she gives right. that nice little badge holders, too. Mm -hmm. And, of course, if you get a chance, definitely check out the Rock and Roll course. Um, for anyone here that knows, I'm Joe Cantafa. You know Kintafa. the Rock, yeah, Joe yeah, Cantafa. And this course, if you've seen them perform, are they, uh, Mike, are they performing at the conference this year? You know, last year I know they did. Uh, this year I did not see them on the, the, um, the bill for uh, performing in a lobby concert, but uh, there will be a booth there. Right. Yes, definitely check them out. They, they do a lot of cool stuff. And then another booth I want to check out, the J.W. Pepper. They also give out a lot of cool things. They give out, I think um, last year I got a whole a catalog about this big, with all really big, with all the music they ever, pub ever publish and have in the directory. And it's a nice thing to have. A, so, what you should bring. Bring about like $50, $400. Might not even need that much, but you know, Money to spend. You, know, you can always find something to spend, especially at the booths, because they do sell things, too. And, my parking is free. Well, actually, we decided this year, just because you asked that question, we're going to charge $100 per car. No, okay. I'm kidding. Yes, parking is free. <laughs> okay, thanks. And don't You're be welcome. like me. Don't go in the wrong entrance. I somehow, I don't know how. Oh, yes, I, went in the wrong, I went in the wrong entrance somehow. Don't ask me how, but if you make sure you actually go to the hotel and don't go to the you know, parking garage near it, if you go, they'll get a nice ticket. That, and you might get uh, booted in there. Yes. We don't want that to happen. No. Definitely bring a notebook or computer to take notes as, you know, you might forget some of the things that, you know, speakers might say, and there's a lot of things happening. And registration gives you a nice little tote bag full of goodies to hold all the handouts you'll be getting at the events. We are getting tote bags, right, Mike? As far, yeah, I would think so. Uh, Marie, I've been asking her questions about that. Uh, who, who's getting the bags this year? I haven't heard anything from Marie, but uh, I would think that we're getting tote bags, yes. And there's going to be a nice little uh, uh, goodie of some kind uh, on behalf of NJMEA. Some, last year was a water bottle, I believe. Uh, right. Something to that effect. So there's some cool stuff in there. And then the booths, again, they'll give out bags as well. So you can probably get bags from them if you have you know, a lot of overabundance of things that you want to bring back to school. It's like trick or treat, except you're at a conference. It is, and those of you that hang out on Saturday to uh, strike everything, the, the exhibitors will intentionally leave things behind because uh, they don't want it anymore, and uh, that's fair game. Yes, actually, I have a, a quick story about that. Anyone that volunteered here from Westminster last year wouldn't probably know this. After the um, sessions were basically ending and we had volunteers cleaning up, um, a nice crowd of us went to the ballroom. I mean, the salons, and we basically raided anything that was left and took a lot of things. They were definitely, <laughs> because what, most of these people, they just bring these, they just bring these things and then like, oh, I don't want to take them back with me on the flight. I just leave them here. So there is a lot of stuff. I had a box probably as big as me last yeah. year that was able to bring stuff back. Yeah. Oh, Emily, do you want to say something? They're nice and helpful to people, especially the vendors. Like there was one um, 
one woman who was presenting a lot of elementary stuff, and I helped her just kind of organize her booth, and she gave me a thunder tube, which is this really cool thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, thunder tubes are awesome. Um, just, just like for my travel, so that's really just nice. Be available mm -hmm. to help people in there. Get my confidence in you. <laughs> so. If anyone is here in this room or anyone that is streaming in live right now, if you still want to register, you have to register on site now. So what that means when you get to the conference, whether it be Thursday morning, Friday morning, or Saturday morning, they'll go to the registration table and they'll basically help you sign that gets you know started. And you, Mike, do you where do you, is it a certain line for people who haven't registered yet? Yeah, what will happen is um, in the registration area, it'll be clearly um, outlined as far as uh, there'll be a sign that says pre-registration. So those of you that, well, obviously most of you are volunteering, so you don't have to work. Well, yeah, you still have to go there and get your stuff, of course. Um, so you'll get your badge from there. And then uh, those of you that need to register on site, there'll be a separate spot for that. And those of you working the registration desk will be responsible for doing some of that stuff, like credit card transactions, uh, if anybody's paying by cash or check. Or even purchase. I don't believe purchase orders are accepted on site registration. No, I don't. I don't remember that either. But yeah, for collegiate students, it's sixty dollars, which is only ten more than pre-registration, which isn't bad at all. And make sure you are a national member if you plan on. If you haven't registered yet, make sure. Oh you're yes. <laughs> that is where people get confused. That's yes, always like do. a example. People forget they need to be a national member, and they go and they're like, "Oh, do you have your national ID number?" And they're like, "No." no. Speaking of that, real quick, if I may, thank you guys, all of you. I know there was a lot of craziness. I've been sending out random emails to a lot of you uh, over the past couple of weeks regarding your NAFME membership. Obviously, um, I'm hearing from the higher-ups, these guys must be registered. Okay, no problem. So I really appreciate all of you that took that action to take care of that. That's really cool. The other thing with NAFME membership, there's an app from NAFME, if you want to use your smartphone, that will actually have your NAFME card on it. I just found that. That's pretty cool. So it has a, bar co a QR code. You can scan. If, if you do get scanned um, from your smartphone, it comes up with your ID number. Is that the new nice. QR code on my NAFME card? Oh, yes, right. And there's also an app on your smartphone for NAFME. Oh, sweet. <laughs> and also, speaking of apps, there's an NJMEA app as well. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm going to We're getting... And oh, where is it? Where are you? Oh, you have an iPhone only. Unfortunately, it's in the uh, App Store. I don't own the Android. Sorry. I'm trying to get them to go on Android, but I haven't gotten there yet. What? So dynamic. Yes. Did you repeat that? Repeat which part? The digital app part. I can repeat it. If you recently got your um, your your membership renewed. And you got your card sent to the mail. Yeah. Your card should have a QR code on it. You can scan that, and then the it, you should have your. You can scan it on your oh, phone, well, and it'll have that. your. Um, yeah, mine just came in the mail. Membership. And then there's an NAFME app or an NGMEA. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, so now, now, before we get to the secret part, is the classified section for those volunteers who are mad, who are braving the call. The picture from last year's volunteers. You know, there's a few familiar faces. I see you know, Emily, Justin, Marissa, a few others volunteered. So I think if you new volunteers, if you want to ask about how the volunteer works, you can also feel free to ask anyone who volunteered last year. That goes for anyone watching too. If you know someone from your school that volunteered, definitely ask them about the experience. It's something. So Thursday, your schedule will be planned for you. I'm still working on that. I'm waiting to hear back from about two people, so please be patient for me. But I will try. If I don't hear back from those people soon, then I'm just going to send out a schedule tonight just because we need to know what our, our time is going to be for Thursday. And you'll arrive in, you'll check in, and then you'll work your shift. And then we'll probably, that night, the con there will be a concert, which I don't know. We won't need ushers for that concert, right, Mike? No, that's intercollegiate. Um, that con Thursday evening concert's the grand opening of the, the exhibits, even though the exhibits will be open all day. Um, then the intercollegiate uh, concerts will be going on. There'll be a reception. Uh, pretty much, a, it's like a dessert coffee reception, cash bar. If those of you are obviously of age, um, that's pretty much it there. But registration will be open, and obviously for volunteers, we got to move a lot of stuff yep. during that time period. So that'll be uh, that's the fun time begins. 
And then, of course, for all volunteers, we still have to meet that night. You know, so we actually all meet together in one place. And that night, we'll probably sign up for um, Friday shifts as well. Like there'll be like certain like big poster boards throughout the room, and you'll take a nice marker and just sign up for a time. Yep. Again. For those of us who cannot volunteer until Friday. How will that work I will get in con I will probably get in for anyone that's coming on Friday, I will probably get in contact with you Wednesday night or Thursday afternoon and tell you the hours and ask what hours you would like to work. And then I'll I will I'll probably just give you a place to work and then I'll tell you where you're working, if that's okay with everyone. So and then comes the fun part. Friday. Goodbye, Santa. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. We will definitely be doing a lot on Friday. Get ready to move, move, and move some more. And then, of course, Friday evening, we'll have ushers for the King Singers and do another volunteer meeting where we'll sign up once more for shifts on Saturday. And By the way, speaking of Friday evening, there's a big reception after the uh, King Singers concert over in the tower and uh, lots of food. So, um, you know, if you're looking for uh, some... Uh, good eats, if you will, at the uh, end of the concert. There's a nice reception and good social hour. You can talk to your professors, uh, any old teachers that you have. You want to network with new people. A lot of great opportunity there. Mm -hmm, definitely. And then, of course, Saturday, last hoorah, my last time volunteering. I know you all are going to be upset that day because you all missed the volunteering experience. <laughs> I'll have tissues for you all. It's okay. <laughs> well, approximately on Saturday, will we finish up? Probably Saturday, Mike, I know there's people working the loading dock on Saturday till 7. That's what the schedule you gave me. Is that correct? That's correct. I don't know. That, that's up in the air at the moment. I don't know exactly what we're doing with that. I would think that if we're, at, if we're still um, doing things with that loading dock at 7 o'clock, there's a problem. Right. Agreed. Because most of the other things will be done. Like, volunteers will be done by, like, 4, 4.30 at the latest, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, once sessions start shutting down, we will uh, be breaking them down. So uh, once those rooms are done, we're done with them, and we don't have to go back to them. So we kind of try to do things in, uh, you know, in sequence. As they shut down, we shut them down, and then we're done with that area. And then, just for our volunteers, a little checklist on how to be an awesome volunteer. When you have a place you have to go to, such as Tower, let's say Tower 19, you want to make sure all the presenters in the time that you're assigned have everything they need. Go up to them, introduce yourself, introduce yourself. I'm so and so. I'm the collegiate, uh, collegiate volunteer. If you need help with anything, I'd be happy to help you with something. They'll say, "No, I'm probably good." Or you have to get this for me. That'd be great. Definitely make yourself known to them. And of course, help conference attendees to their destination. People will definitely definitely ask you questions. I see like a collegiate volunteer thing. So make sure you and also. Anticipate questions mm -hmm. and make sure you show up for your shift. I know it's kind of common knowledge, but if someone for some reason doesn't report to where they're supposed to be, it will cause mass chaos in the end. <laughs> yes, more does. work for us. My hair will turn white. I don't want my hair to turn white. I like that's why hair. I shave my head so I don't have to deal with that. So, yeah, well, maybe I'll do that. I don't know. <laughs> also, be willing to heed the call or text. Or text. Or text. Yeah, guys, if I may, Andrew, real quick on that, guys. Um, I guess going back to the first bullet we were talking about, uh, make sure the presenter has everything they need. Obviously, uh, you know, once the session starts, you can't really talk to them, but um, the presiders are there. So if there's an issue with climate control, that pretty much would be our biggest issue, that and um, audiovisual needs, such as the lavalier batteries going dead, which they do, and uh, some people seem to freak out when that happens. It's pretty funny, actually, uh, when that happens, but it's not funny. Um, if that is the case, there are phone numbers. God help us all. Um, my phone number, James Schwalick's phone number, Marie's number, important numbers are in the back of each room. Uh, they will probably be... Oh, thank you. Oh, very nice. Oh, look at that. Very nice. Uh, yes, uh, some of our, us people will be actually on that list. And there is a major issue. Um, yeah, call us and we'll help you. Climate control, you can pick up the house phone. If there's a house phone in the hotel, pick that up and dial zero. And um, that'll connect you with the hotel. Identify yourself and just say... Um, I'm in such and such room. There's an issue with the climate. Can we have uh, engineering? That's the key word. Engineering come up and adjust the um, the temperature. Uh, banquets handles the chairs and all those other things. Engineering handles uh, climate issues, and um, you know if the lights go out. They'll deal with that. And anything else audio visual. There's a separate um, uh, company that we're using. That the, I forget the guy's name. His name is Leo, but uh, that's James. So anything with audio visual needs or 
music stands or uh, instruments such as percussion equipment. That goes through James. And speaking of James, James <laughs> actually kind of pre-recorded something for us, and he would like to share with you. I'm going to play it on this computer of Westminster people just because I don't want there to be like a you know audio delay between this and that, and then hear a volume differently. So go ahead and click on that, PDN. Hello, Collegiate NAFME members. My name is James Shawalik, and I'm the Audiovisual and Equipment Manager for the NJMEA State Conference. As you may have heard or seen in your PowerPoint presentation, things at the conference can get a bit hectic while you're volunteering. And for this, I want to apologize, because usually when that happens, it's something in my department. My job is to make sure that every clinician has all the stuff they need for their sessions, and sometimes things change last minute. How much stuff? Well, this includes over $40,000 worth of percussion instruments, 12 Steinway pianos valued at over $30,000, $25,000 worth of audiovisual equipment, 12 choir risers amounting to $5,000, and of course, 250 music stands spread throughout the entire conference for a grand total of over $100,000 worth of stuff to move around between 50 or so clinicians in 25 rooms over the course of three days. Well, how does this get done? For starters, literally hundreds of emails and phone calls to get the information that's then compiled into spreadsheets for the management team, in addition to our outside contract with our production company and the hotel. But then, and most importantly, there's you. Ultimately, our collegiate volunteers are what make our conference happen. Our staff is dedicated to making our conference a success, which means we're dedicated to you. Michael and I started out as collegiate volunteers, as did Nancy, our exhibits coordinator, and several other staff members in this week, such as Mel, Joe, and Matt. And I can honestly say that my life as a music teacher has been greatly enriched by working so closely with the conference. You get to meet educators from around the state and even around the country and share ideas and networking with the best in our field. So thanks again for all you do for us. I know your collegiate volunteer experience is something you'll never forget. Now finish your meeting and get some rest. I look forward to meeting some new faces on Thursday, and there's plenty of work to be done. <laughs> Go ahead. And, yep. Go ahead and go to the next slide, Katie Ann. So that was the awesome James. So, and thank you all that joined us via streaming and those here. We are ending near the end of this wonderful presentation. So, conclusion: you will be amazing, and you will conquer everything from now on by going to this conference. It is a great networking experience to see all the educators there from New Jersey and other states as well. Those presenting to meet with them and you know exchange ideas. Professional development as well from those of us here at Westminster, you know, volunteering, however many hours you're going to volunteer, they'll go towards your PDA. And those who are attending the conference, however many hours, you know, session-wise, you know, that will also go towards your PDA. And on professional development, each person that, you know, registers when they sign in, they get a professional development certificate. Right, Mike? That is correct. And you have to make sure that the person, now, do they have to sign it, have the presenter sign it, or uh, what's the rule on that again? We used to do it that way. We don't do that anymore. Basically, folks, when you get your uh, PDA uh, certificate, uh, you are responsible for filling out, um, you know, uh, what session you went to. So it's basically the honor system. So there will be a signature by Debbie Sfraga on each of those certificates. Those of you who do need those for, if there are any teachers on this right now, uh, there will be a signature from Debbie Sfraga on each of those sheets, and uh, you are free to uh, basically fill them in yourself. Right. What's nice as well is, you know, it all depends on what's, you know, what school you go to. But, you know, in a general case, there are going to be things at this conference that probably aren't mentioned a lot at the school we, we attend. And it's really nice to get a different perspective as well on topics that are discussed here in the curriculum for any school. Also, once again, you're going to meet a lot of new people, make a lot of new friends. So you'll get their Facebook numbers, their digits, and all that. <laughs> also, <laughs> what's nice is that definitely, there's definitely growth as a pre-service music educator, you know, in terms of those volunteering, handling all the behind the scenes work and seeing how much work actually gets put in to this conference. And as well for those attending, you know, attending sessions that maybe they're not familiar with, maybe someone who isn't familiar with musical theater is going to go to that razzle-dazzle reading session and they might start to equate themselves more with musical theater music. And of course, the best thing about the conference, handouts, handouts, and more handouts. Handouts, 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 handouts. It's one of the best things. So, questions about this event? 
You said that the schedule for the volunteering will receive tonight. Yeah, well, I will try my best to get it to everyone tonight. It might be in the wee hours of the morning, so you might open up your inbox tomorrow and see it, but you will have it. Um, oh, Emily. Um, for Saturday in the afternoon, I know I usually just come back in town by 5, even if that's possible for like, my time. No, right, yeah, like if anyone who's listening to this as well, if you have a conflict, just please email Mike, email myself, and we'll definitely accommodate you the best we can. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we're just grateful that you guys are able to help out. So if we can accommodate you in any way, definitely let us know. And, folks, be mindful of the fact also, I mean, you know, there will be downtime. You might find a time where you might get bored of sitting somewhere, so you're like, all right, let me go somewhere. Let me go help out somewhere. There's plenty, as James said before, and I love how he had that music playing, uh, there's plenty of things to do. Uh, there's never a dull moment. Uh, we can make jokes. We can do a lot of things. We might be even playing Uno for a little while because it's dead. But... Um, be, be ready for anything. You go to any sessions you want. If you're sitting around doing absolutely nothing and you're like, what do I do? Um, go into a session room. You know, sit in the session room. You get, you basically, you're, you're going for free, those of you volunteering. So get the most out of that. Uh, there will be plenty of downtime. There will be plenty of hectic time, too. And uh, there's a little of everything. Does anyone else have a question? Oh, Megan. On Friday, what time in the morning? I know that you had said on Thursday that everyone was meeting at like 6 o'clock in the morning. What time? Do you want us there on Friday? It all, it's all going to depend on what time. For those who are commuting, mm -hmm. it's just all going to depend on what time that your sign up schedule. Uh, oh, okay. So right. we'll find that out on the schedule. Right. I know I said for Westminster people, I saw the Google Docs. I just want us to leave early because there's a lot that's going to be happening that Thursday. I want to make sure we also get a nice parking spot. Mm -hmm. And because I mean, it's about a half hour drive, and there's some people have shifts starting at 7. So it's nice we all get there together. Did you get a half hour drive? To, you know, they have to also count for traffic, especially that route one. It's a nightmare. It will take probably more. Than oh, that. route eighteen traffic. Forget it. Have fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, yes. Will we be receiving like tentative schedules and like the list of the phone numbers for the different um, people we can call? Them yes. I, and this PowerPoint actually, you can go on YouTube to my YouTube oh. page and actually access this PowerPoint again. This okay. Streaming session. Drama guy. But okay. I will. Yeah, drama guy. Troy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I uh, know I'll make sure that everyone also gets a list, like an actual list. M Mike, actually, we have a list, right, that we can send yeah, out. Yeah, I have a list of everybody. I, the only person I don't have is um, uh, this. Where's my list? Uh oh, uh, I dropped my phone behind my cabinet here. I can't grab it. Um, oh well. Yes, uh, I have one person. Sa bon uh, Sarah Bono, I believe, is the only person I don't oh, have. Lauren Bono. Lauren, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, I'll make sure. Um, I'll, I'll, We'll make sure we get we get. That's fine, no problem. I have a whole list of uh, folks. I have a list of everybody, uh, your phone numbers, emails, and et cetera. So as long as it's okay with everybody, if nobody has any objection, I, I'd like to distribute it amongst the team. So if, and it also includes the um, uh, the state conference staff that are actually uh, you saw their faces, our faces before. Um, this way, if there is a problem, you need to get in co contact with somebody. You have their number. And so if it's okay with everybody, I'll I'll make sure everybody gets an email on that. Okay, good. Um, anyone else here? Yes, Emily. Um, for Wednesday night, do we still need people to stuff bags, or...? Mike, how are, you, how are you on tomorrow night? Do we need people? Yes, um, thank you. That's a good question. Anybody who's available, I'm looking for... I already got a couple emails from some people. And, um, anybody who's available tomorrow night for a couple hours, um, what I basically am looking for is for people... We need to get uh, the, bag, the goodie bag stuff. That's a big, big process, and it's a pain in the neck. If we run out of them, we have a problem. So we'd like to get a surplus going. So well, I need people what that time, are. What's what that? Time think, what time are you thinking of us getting there? As early as you guys can. I don't want you. And again, folks, I know a lot of you have school, so I don't want you to uh, skip class either. So mm -hmm. do what you have to do with school first. That comes. In, that's the most important thing. Take care of your school obligations first. When you're free, and you guys can come down to the hotel and help us out with bags. That would be greatly appreciated. I'll buy you dinner. Uh, whatever I have to do. Uh, to uh, get you guys there to help out for a couple hours, that would be great. Um, obviously, I don't have any. Unfortunately, I don't have any hotel rooms available tomorrow night. I wish I did, but uh, we might change that based on, um, you know, what's going on this year. But um, those of you who can make it, great. I will definitely have a lot to do. We have pianos to move. Uh, percussion truck is coming tomorrow night. So if anybody really needs, to, really wants to help out moving some heavy stuff, we have that. Four to eight people. That's it. So uh, if you are one of those people that would like to jump on that wagon, send me an email, and I will take care of you. Okay. Um, real quick, can, who's monitoring the Facebook page? Can, yeah. Do you have any questions? Um, one person asked uh, when you can monitor the Facebook page. 
also said it's on YouTube. Right? Yes. So yeah, the PowerPoint will be available on YouTube. So if you need to look for, for like watch it again. I'll also I'll probably send out this PowerPoint to the volunteers as well, Mike. Okay? Yeah, that's a great idea. Sure. That's an excellent idea. Any more questions? Also, the other one was just what time are we expecting to volunteer? Are there assigned shifts or days? Right, and yeah, remember the Thursday is when we have assigned shifts, and I'll hopefully get those out either tonight or in the wee hours of the morning. So you wake up, you have a nice message from me. Uh, I'll try to get dates right this time too. Um, <laughs> any other like on the collegiate page on um, and is anyone Allison? Is anyone trending and Jamie collegiate? Um, last time I checked, but this one. Okay. I'll double check. Okay. But Mike, is there anything else you want? Any last things you want to add before we say good night? Uh. Yeah, two things real quick. Obviously, in our meeting on Thursday night, we'll go over what uh, zones. Uh, we have zones, uh, basically, that'll kind of lay out everywhere you're, every bit of ground that this entire convention covers, so you'll know what's going on. We'll refer to them by, by, letter, by letter. So zone A, obviously, would be like registration, the lobby. Zone B would be concourse level and so on, going all the way up to Tower 22 or 21. And um, you'll see on the uh, actual uh, the schedule where you are, we'll define it by zone. And the other thing I want to mention to you guys, again, I can't stress enough how grateful we all are on behalf of NJMEA. Thank you, all of you, for what you're doing and what you're about to embark upon. And at any time you have any questions, you have a comment, you have a concern, you just want to say hello, come and talk to us. We're very approachable people. And um, I want to make sure that you guys walk away from this experience um, learning about production, the ins and outs of a major, major experience of a state conference. And uh, there's a lot more to come down the pike. I'm talking with Dr. Dammers right now about uh, expanding this statewide so you guys can go online and fill out, like you did with the um, volunteer, an online Google Doc form that will enable you to volunteer for other events that regions 1, 2, and 3, and the Allstate will be available as well. So there's a lot of things coming down the pike. All right. Well, no, there's no, not any more questions. Any last call for questions? Last call? Going once, going twice. So... I think we're good to go, Mike. Sounds oh. good. Oh, there's everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, and again, guys, real quick, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, obviously don't call me at 3 o'clock in the morning, but you can call Andrew. That's okay. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll probably be up. I'll, I'll be up. Yeah, I'm sure you will, too. I wouldn't doubt that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, guys, anybody who has any questions about anything, call me, text me, email me, whatever you got to do, I will find you. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on, well, I don't know how to really use Twitter, but um, I can't believe I'm actually saying that. Um, but yeah, we're available, guys. Well, thank you to all those who are watching right now. Thank you all for attending as well. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Feel free to email Mike. And I can't wait to see you guys at the conference. So good night. Go get some rest, please. Yeah, it's going to be fun, guys. Yeah. Bye, Mike. Good night, everybody.